Hey, look at that. We're back. We're alive. We're there kicking. he is. <laughs> All right. Hey, Purdy, while we have our starting lineups, let's uh, let's get your picks here. Yeah, definitely. Let's talk about tonight's Purdy's picks. First up, we're going to need to watch the wings here. Danbury has fast and skilled wingers such as Johnny Ruiz, totaling up 63 points on the year, and that's nothing to scoff at. Next up, youth and speed. This one pertains to the Bobcats. They're a younger team. They have a lot of youth. They've got youthful legs. They need to use those legs, and tonight's the best best opportunity yet against the Danbury team that comes in with the championship from last year. They've got something to prove and everything to lose. Physicality first. They need to play the body and then play the puck. So if this Bobcats team goes with a physicality first mindset, well, everything else will follow. And last up, all gas, no brakes. Pretend the brake lines were cut in the truck and you're rolling down the hill at 100 miles an hour. That means you need to do all the little things right so you can go in a straight line. The same thing applies to the Bobcats. If they do every little thing right, the big things will follow. That means crisp passes, guys where they need to be, area passes, smart shots, crash the net, F1 hard, 110%, pass it to F2 to F3 in the back of the net. And Brett, that's going to just about wrap up today's Purdy's picks. I like them. I like them too. This is going to be a high octane game tonight. Taylor Joseph is in between the pipes for the Danbury hat tricks tonight. As there you see the stats for both goalies, Purdy. And we'll pause now for our national anthem. Yeah, we'll get back to these goalies in a second here. A lot to talk about these two. Spirited rendition of the Star Spangled Banner from Keith Gore and uh, Purdy, let's take a look here at our starting goaltenders tonight. So first up, let's delve into Taylor Joseph here. A very unique fact about him, he played two games with the Toronto Marlies in the AHL. That he did. Tallying up a 3.75 and an 8.94 goals against save percentage respectively. Uh, he's played high level hockey. This year he's played for the Binghamton Black Bears, tallying no games. 26 games with the Columbus River Dragons and now three games with the Danbury Hattricks where he's got a 2.01 goals against and a 9.43 save percentage. Owen oh, Liskowitz on the other hand. He's a big boy. 37 games played, a 3.53 goals against and an 8.99 save percentage. He's stopping nine out of 10, which gives your team a chance to win every single time. Very quickly, let's look at our impact players tonight. The Danbury captain, Johnny Ruiz, one to watch and Joel Frazee. Three goals and three assists in his last three games. Joel Frazee coming from Danbury at the beginning of the year. He's another player with a lot to prove tonight. 
And away we go. Bobcats wearing the specialty green jerseys tonight after they didn't arrive on time last weekend for the supposed St. Patrick's Day Saturday game that was supposed to take place six days ago. Danbury wearing orange for both games this weekend. As Max Zenovitz will move this ahead, pass was tipped by Cunningham. Behind the net, Matt Ernst starting alongside Alex Norwinski on defense sends this ahead. Tipped into the zone by Andrioli. Banked up the wing around Newberg, picked up by Ernst in his own end for Justin Daly, who takes a big hit right there from Xavier Abdella. <coughs> Daly gave it right back to him. Picked up by Connor Woolley and moved through the neutral zone. Woolley a shot right on goal, stopped by Liskowitz. And we get our first whistle 59 seconds in. Liskowitz making the good routine glove save early. Getting his hand on the puck and feeling it essential to a good start. And you said the other night there were some that in that Friday game that he'd like to have back. So a chance to redeem himself and coming in relief for Connor Green back on Wednesday as this is sent down the length of the ice for an icing call. Certainly held his own in that regard, gave the Bobcats a chance to come back. Very quickly, let's take a look at how these teams match up head to head. You see the differences in terms of goals per game, goal differential, the power play, but the thing to circle there, the penalty kill, both teams operating it at 82%. Pretty good percentages there for the penalty kill. I'll say. Backhanded down low by Wooley. William Berry centers. Wooley walks right into the high slot. Missed high. Had all the time and space in the world, but couldn't do anything with it. Out top, Ratcliffe had his stick lifted. He's checked by Bohan. Held in for the moment. Now cleared out by Ivoshkin with Vlasov. Two on two. Vlasov checked at the line. Picked up by Newberg and dumped in. Joseph behind the net will leave this for Josh LaBelle, who was a Columbus River Dragon last year. A lengthy defenseman will wait behind his own net. For Zach Pamelion, his defensive partner. Pamelion sashays on Delcart, trying to center it off the skate of Sezenovitz, picked up by Igor. Delcart, no draw behind the net, try and start the breakout here. Igor, to the right for Newberg, to the middle, Max. Zinovitz muscles his way down low. Backhander off the goal stick of Joseph. Ivanov taps it down low. Zinovitz chasing after it, but it's picked up by Samuel Tetero. And up the wall, a shot from Newberg from the point was tipped wide by Zinovitz, who throws a hit there in the corner. Sent up and out by Danbury, but Delcart quickly to recover. Ahead for Martin. One on four, waits for reinforcement, sends it down low. Looking for Andrioli. Scrum for it behind the net. Andrioli had it pop away from him. Pam Lyon ahead for Cunningham. Cunningham was checked from behind. Daniel McKittrick had his pocket picked by Ertz. Now a centering feed tipped by Andrioli to the far side half boards for AZ. Norwinski now trying to go up the wing. Daly unable to clear. Held in by Danbury. Ruiz taps it down low. Cunningham. Cunningham pinned up nicely by Ertz. We heard yesterday on our coaches show talk about his physical presence. Here he comes. Matt Ernst speeds in. Drop pass. Daly a shot. Blocked high. Up and out of play. Well, that was a really smart, heady play, though, by Matt Ernst. He Matt, had the room. He took it. Matt Ernst scoring his first professional goal in his last game played. Looking for an assist that time rather than the go-ahead point. He has a goal and an assist so far and his Handful of games. 16.38 left in our first period. Standout Florida player. Daytona Beach native. This one dumped into the cross side by the Danbury hat tricks. Bohan up the wing. It's picked up now by Stephen Ford. Andrioli will send it in. Around the wall it comes. 
Daly hops to it. His pocket was picked by Ratcliffe and banked out. Wooley ahead. He'll send it on. Liskiewicz will make the glove stop. And take a minute to think about it. Yeah, took a little bit too long there. Liskiewicz getting the whistle. Unwanted whistle at that. He wanted to play it there. Shots 2-1. Danbury here in the early going. 3.50 gone by to be specific. Tie up off the draw. Ivanov behind the net. Pass too far for Ivoskin. Tetro will go D to D here. And Danbury will dump this in and go to the hunt. Delcart was knocked off it by Bodon Zinchenko. Ivoshkin will move this ahead. Vlasov lost an edge and lost the puck, and it's dumped back in by the Hat Tricks. Centering feed picked off. That was off the stick of Nick Danikola as it's tapped into the zone by Ivoshkin. Tetro behind the net, fades away from Ivoshkin. And now we'll leave it for Abdella. Abdella watched by Martin. Martin was a member of the Carolina team last year that lost in the full five games of that Commissioner's Cup final. As Ernst nearly had a breakaway, but Zinchenko checked him and dumped it back in. Norwinski, pirouetting, picked off by Abdella at the line, a backhander, settled down by McKittrick. He'll try and send it on the backhand himself, blocked and backhanded out by Ernst. Abdella could not stick it down, but it's going to be an icing call nonetheless with 14.50 left here in period number one. Shots 2-1, Danbury here in the early going. We'll take a timeout, come right back as both teams feel each other out a little bit. Back here inside the Apex Center alongside Ryle Purdy, I'm Brett Wiseman. 14.50 to go here in our first period. Five minutes, 10 seconds gone by. First ever meeting between the 2023 Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks and the expansion Blue Ridge Bobcats. First of two, only two meetings between these two. The Danbury Hattricks, one of two teams that this Bobcats program will only face twice this year, the Watertown Wolves being the others. That'll be the last weekend of the regular season and the last pair of home games as this is up and out of play. Almost called them the Watertown Sea Wolves. Whoa, that can't, can't be having that. No, no, no. Canberry wins the draw, out to the point. Shot blocked by Martin. Pass intended for Ruiz was blocked and up into the netting it goes after it pinballed off a number of twigs. Nice souvenir puck for some Danbury Hattrick fans that made the trip up, well down rather. I was gonna say, down. All the way down from Danbury, Connecticut. It's not a terribly long trip. Six, seven hours maybe? Not so bad. Good interstate system out here on the East Coast. Tell you what, man, I-77 has its moments. Sent into the zone by LaBelle, who was checked by Andrioli. Two former River Dragons going at it. LaBelle at the point, shot blocked off the skate of Andrioli. He can't get it out of the zone, though. Wooley intercepts. 
Moves down the half ports, leaves it. Barry for McDuffie. Back to the point, LaBelle trying to go for the backdoor tip. But that was nullified. Good Lisko stick. Yeah, good stick right there by Liskowitz to break up that pass attempt. He read that like a book. As Daly and Barry were battling with one another along the near side half boards, comes all the way back down. Daly forechecking and sent around the wall for Josh LaBelle. He'll send it ahead, touched back, brought ahead now Pam Lyon. He'll wait, try and throw it down low for Michael Falanga. That was picked off. Ivanov banks it ahead. Got Ivashkin. Now to Tattern Skate to stick. Dropped it. Vlasov lets it go. Stick save. Up and out of play and into the rafters. There goes another Literally. souvenir puck. Not even Jimmy Milliken could get a hand on that. Not sure where that landed. I'm trying to see. Yeah, I'm looking around too. Not quite sure. Looks like it almost took out a security guard. Among other things. Igor with a shot. Score! Igor! A seeing eye rester! And the Cats are on the board first. It's 1-0. I think Vlad may have tipped that. And it looks like it, Vlad leading the charge through the uh, hand, hand line. What a redirect by Vlad, ever so slight. And that had to be a set play off the faceoff, Purdy. Oh, definitely, that's, that's how it's drawn in the books. And that is exactly how it's supposed to be executed. Textbook play. I guess you could say the Cats have pounced on the hat tricks. But I'm seven minutes in. What do we always say? You got to throw the first punch. Igor's got credit for the goal for now, but Vlad led the line. Here's Ernst across the line. Muscles his way down low. Goal stick to side by Joseph, who was aggressive with the poke. Kyle Gonzalez, pass too far for Cunningham. Norwinski plays it over, Sazinovitz slams on the brakes. He was checked by Cunningham, now he'll go over to Ernst. He'll hoist it into the zone. Abdella could not stick it down, and as a result nullifies an icing as Ernst was on his own side of the red. Frazee for checking, Sazinovitz nearly forced to turn over. Ford to Bohan, he'll go back to Ford, D to D. Ford now to Daly, Daly. Speeds down the far side. Walks in, shoots off the mask of Joseph. Bohan shot the rebound high. Pucks loose in the high slot and picked up by Danbury and Danger escaped. Scrum for it behind the net. It's picked up by Stephen Ford off the glass and out. LaBelle. Sent this ahead, Wooly plays it over. Sent it on goal, and Liskowitz will just hang on to this one. Big crunch by the Bohan. Right next to the Dutch Miller Nissan of Whitfield sign. Gave him a crunch. Bohan, one of the newer guys on this Bobcats roster. He can hit, shoot, score. He can do just about everything. A great addition to this already deep Bobcats defense. You heard Vortex and Lika talk about uh, the additions to the defense and the impact that guys like Bohan and Ford and Ernst have made. Stretch feed, Vlad's in all alone. Stopped by Joseph. He nearly had his second. What a pass to set that one up too. Some serious sauce on it. LaBelle sends it on. Zinchenko couldn't handle it. Delcart banks it up and out. And this will be an icing call with exactly nine minutes gone by. Fact about Bodon Zinchenko, he signed with K 
Carolina back in June, the Ukrainian native. But when Carolina's previous head coach resigned and went to the OHL, he pulled a college football recruiting move and for lack of better phrasing, decommitted and went to Danbury. And it looks like he's found a home there as well. Crowd is loud here at the Apex Center tonight. A lot of cowbells. There's a shot. I think Liskowitz got that one with the glove. He almost went through the glove. That was a heat-seeking missile. That Liskowitz carefully took care of with the glove. 10.48 remaining. Here in the first, shots are 5-3. Danbury, they trail it though, one nothing. Tie up off the draw. Pops free to the near side. Norwinski will hop to it, and now we have a whistle and I believe a penalty upcoming. It is on Newberg. And this is a familiar sight we've seen. Interference. Leonza Newberg not agreeing. <laughs> no. That was the MO on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. Uh, oh boy, already hearing it from the fans. Leon's on a short leash, it seems. A very short one. He's the only one of the crew that returns from the crew Wednesday night. So we'll get our first penalty kill here. Two for interference is the call. There's a shot and a stick save made by Liskowitz. So now this one backhanded up and out. Andrioli racing after it. Joseph out of his net to play it. He'll send it around behind the goal for Daniel McKittrick. McKittrick dropped to LaBelle. To his right, Ruiz. Ruiz fakes the slap shot. Down low he comes. LaBelle trying to go over for McKittrick. Now back to LaBelle. And Ruiz fanned on the one-timer. Might have broken the twig a bit. Ruiz back to LaBelle at the point of shot. Blocked and cleared by Andrioli. Boy, that guy just does everything you ask him to. Pamela Lyon up the near side, met by Norwinski and shoveled back down. Joel Frazee, the ex hat trick on the attack. Yep, spent the first handful of games there and was looking for a job and picked up by the Bobcats. Pam on a shot right on, save made by Liskowitz. Ratcliffe outside the dots. 25 seconds left on the man advantage for Danbury. Pam Lyon to the point, Wooley. Drop pass, Ratcliffe. That one deflected high. Zinchenko on the far side. Pam Lyon, Ratcliffe. Fakes the one-timer. Watched by Frazee. Pam Lyon hit by Frazee. Frazee trying to dig it out of the scrum. Pam Lyon hangs onto it. Daly works it away. Now a two-on-one short-handed. Frazee walks in off the side of the net. Half the crowd thought that was in. Oh, that was close, Brett. Penalty's been killed. Out top, Ivanov holds the line. Shoots, blocker to side. Igor pivots. Keeps control of it. Finds some space to work with. Off the pad of Joseph. And now sent all the way back up and out. Shots now even at six after that sequence. That's been quite a surge there from the Bobcats. Now stepping slightly off sides. 8.08 remaining here in our first period. Bobcats have a one nothing lead. We are back right after this. Is winter weather taking a toll on your car's shine? Then pay a visit to Mountain Edge Car Wash. Located between Sheets and Bojangles off I-81 at exit 70, Mountain Edge offers a variety of washes for all vehicle types. 
Choose from simple washes like Base Camp and the Ascent to deluxe washes like the Scream, the Ridge, and the Summit. Premium washes include the Avalanche Ceramic Shield and a trip through Mountain Edge Falls. All washes feature tire shine, bug prep, and rain repellent, plus always free vacuums. Also ask about an unlimited wash membership with plans starting at just $19.99. Visit them today at 200 East Commonwealth Drive in Whitville or online at mountainedgecarwash.com. Back here inside the Apex Center, 8.08 remaining first period. Shovel Kids went to work. Purdy grabbed some Thin Mints. Oh yeah, I got myself some Girl Scout cookies. He found his dealer. Hey, you get hooked on those things real quick if you're not careful. The only thing that disagrees with Girl Scout cookies is my dietitian. <laughs> And now a whistle before the draw. There we go. Danbury wins it. Abdella goes D to D. And a hit by Szenovic says this one's dumped in. Liskowitz sends this up the wing, sent back of the goal. Liskowitz knows this Danbury team pretty well, having spent most of his career in the Empire Division as a member of the Binghamton Black Bears for two and a half seasons and starting this season in Binghamton and then heading to Watertown before coming to Blue Ridge. He's an East Coast individual. So Zinovitz with the intercept was knocked off it. Newberg now touches it over for Danny Martin. Martin muscles his way past Abdella. Slams on the brakes, protects the puck along the half wall. Tried to throw it out top. Banks over to the far side. Bohan sends it down low. Martin centers. Max let it go to Martin, shoots. Blocked in front. Abdella hops on it. He was checked, but able to find a man. That's William Barry. He'll wait for reinforcement. Centering feed, shot wide. Off the stick of Ratcliffe. Daly picks it up, banks it back for Ford. Now to Bohan. Around for Daly. Daly speeds up the far side. Sends it back of the goal. Good play, Andrioli comes to it in the near side corner, beaten to it, and knocked off it by LaBelle. Barry's pass taken by Wooley. Ratcliffe waits, drops it, great stick lift by Daly on the back check, and it springs Andrioli, one on one. Andrioli, down low, stopped by Joseph. He walked right around LaBelle like he was a traffic cone. Andrioli with a good hit in the corner. And Frazee has it intercepted by LaBelle. LaBelle fans on the pass. Banks it ahead. Ivanov knocks this back for Delcart. Andrioli backhands it in. Up the wing it comes. Stretch pass too far. For Zinchenko. And that'll be an icing call with 5.50 left. We're going to have to check the rafters for LaBelle's jockstrap. Yeah, no kidding. Holy smokes, Andrioli wheeled around him and just about tucked it too. He did. Joseph Joseph put the pad out at just the last second. Yep. Just enough to send that one right over the net. And I mean, that's the goalie's job at the end of the day. Get a little bit of something on it. If you get everything, great. If you get a little bit, great. A game Bobcats of win the draw, as you said. It is a game of percentages and inches. Vlad in the near side corner. Trying to center, he was knocked off it. Hit the deck, and then gives Pamelion the business in the corner. Andre walks the point, now to Igor. Back to Ivanov, sends it on just wide. Only creative play right there by Andre to kind of feather it to get the tip. And it surprised Joseph. Sinchenko shoots, deflected wide. Swept aside by the goal stick of Liskowitz on the rebound chance. Now that pass is blocked. And Ivoskin tries to send it ahead, but it was read by Tetro. And dumped back in. Vlasov, hounded by Zinchenko. Delcart comes in to help, four-man scrum. Out of the curling match, Igor finds Josh Newberg. 
Sends it on. Martin backhands it. Ivoskin. Boy. Did Tetro did not get the better end of that collision. Good reverse hit by Nikita Ivoskin right there as Martin chases after this. And he was checked. Sent up by Tetro, but Ernst read it at the red line. Norwinski in the neutral zone. Backhands it ahead, Sazinovitz. Speeds in, shoots. Stick to side by Joseph. Two on two the other way. McKittrick with Cunningham. Cunningham trying to muscle his way in the high slot. He was checked, and a diving Ernst gets it out. Flipped back in by Abdella behind the net with four minutes to go here in the first period. Ernst to his left for Daly. Up the near side. Trying to make it down low for Andrioli, who nullifies the icing by evening out the foot rates. Danbury with control now. This is Barry. Barry will wait. He'll send it on. Liskowitz will make the stop and hang on to it. 3.41 to go first period. We reached our final media timeout. Bobcats out shooting Danbury 8-7 and they lead a 1-0. Back right after this. The inaugural season of Blue Ridge Bobcats hockey is brought to you by Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville. At Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville, you'll always get the best price on a brand new Nissan. From the sleek design of the Altima, to the off-road power of the Titan, to the ever-versatile Rogue. New inventory is arriving weekly. Check us out at DutchMillerNissanOfWithville.com or stop by Dutch Miller anytime during business hours to test drive a Nissan and experience for yourself why Nissan has the innovation that excites. Back here inside the Apex Center. That's Ryle Purdy. I'm Brett Wiseman. That's right. I'm Ryle Purdy, and you're not. That is true. I'm Brett Wiseman. I'm not Ryle Purdy. And that goes to everybody out there. Shot counter now reads even at eight, but the Bobcats lead 1-0 on Vladislav Vlasov's 14th of the season. 14 apples picked from the tree. In the shape and form of Snipes. Vlad Etchkin is no stranger to a This was a redirect. Goal. He scores great goals. Abdella sends it on. Goal sticked up by Liskowitz. It stays in play. Centering feed now. Wooley couldn't get the shot away. Pinballs towards the net. Frazee checked him and then was sent flying. Daly picks it up. Trying to muscle it out of the zone and does. What a play. Daly down the far side. Held up. No call. I don't know about that. Certainly looked like a stick infraction of some kind as that shot's blocker to side by Liskowitz off the stick of Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe once again stopped by the chest of Liskowitz. Liskowitz making a ton of high percentage saves in the slot. He's no stranger to making big body saves. He's a big goalie to begin with. So when he uses his size to his advantage and he comes out of the net and challenges that puck, shooters don't have a lot of places to put it. So oftentimes you see it hit him in the chest, rebound controlled, cover, whistle. Really like the way he's positioned himself so far on the 10 shots he's faced. Off the face off, Nick to Nikola for Falanga, who is pinned up by Ivanov. Delcart checked by D. Nikola. Now Tattern will pivot behind the net. Delcart will try and start the breakout. Hat tricks retreat to make a change. Delcart for Ivanov around Falanga. Ivanov chips it low. Blasov chasing after it. Beats LaBelle to it. Ivashka nearly turned it over behind the net. Pam Lyon with control to Nikola. Had his pocket picked by Ivashkin. Dropped back to LaBelle from Falanga. Charlie Bedard slams on the brakes and sends it down and around. Ivashkin, what a hit right there on Pam Lyon. 
who's then crunched by Ivanov. Falenka walks in, glove save, Liskowitz. And now Vlasov chips this out of the zone. LaBelle beat him to it. And now a whistle. What do we got? It's like just the regular old face off here. No both, teams, both teams in the midst of changes, so your mind always goes to maybe a too many men on the ice. Bench minor, but everybody clean. This one hoisted in, and Liskowitz will hang on to that with a snow shower from the Danbury captain. Now, if that had been Patrick Waugh, the Danbury captain may have been vertically placed horizontally. You can say a lot of things if Patrick Waugh this. Most of them end in <laughs> violence. Yes. Aggressive goalie he was. Have you ever heard of a coach pulling the goalie with 11.50 left in regulation? That's just unheard of. Meet Patrick Waugh. Goalie tactics. Tetro in the near side corner. Knocked off it by Sezenovitz. Norwinski holds the line. Newberg chips it down low. Joseph behind the net with a minute 10 will leave it. And Danbury will try and break this out in the final minute of the first period. Cunningham finds some space, dumps it in. Liskowitz settles this with the goal stick. Ernst takes the hit to make the play. Norwinski up the wing. Abdella sends it back in. Ernst got a piece of it to keep it from going towards the net. 40 seconds. Ernst directing traffic. Frazee up the near side. Sazinovitz trying to throw it back down to Frazee. Gonzalez picks it up. Now Barry. Pass was picked off. Andrioli knocked off it by Ratcliffe. Box loops. And cleared out all the way down. This should be an icing call. But the foot race was won by Wooley with 10 seconds. Daly. Still time left for a rush. Ahead to Ivoshkin. Or Ford, I should say. He'll backhand it in. Joseph with three, with two, with one, with Ford hard charging, and that will do it. For period number one, and a strong one at that for the Bobcats, Purdy. As Ford having words with Ratcliffe, because they thought maybe he took a, maybe a little bit of a swipe there at Taylor Joseph. I mean, he definitely cut it close there. Ford, no stranger to playing on the edge. He's got a lot to say as well. You combine that with, well, he's the F1 and the goalie's got the puck. Recipe for exciting disasters. <laughs> well, I'll have to say, Purdy, that's one of the stronger first periods we've seen in recent time here. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Bobcats have the lead after one. They brought everything to the table tonight and it couldn't come at a better time with so many players having been a part of this previous Danbury team and, all, and having connections on this East Coast with other friends and players. I mean, th there's a lot on the table tonight, especially Danbury winning the league championship last year. They've, <laughs> I mean, they won the title. They did. That's a talented team right there. So Bobcats coming up big after one. Everything's moving in the right direction. That's why the fans are cheering Bobcats, Bobcats. Actually, they're chanting Rufus, Rufus, Rufus. Oh, all right who is wearing Cody Oaks jersey tonight. You know, speaking of Cody Oaks, out with a lower body injury for the rest of the season, he's gonna be a big miss for this Bobcats team, but uh, he has pledged to return next year. He has. For this Bobcats team, and well, I couldn't be more excited for a core player to stay with this team, especially when uh, the end of the season comes around and you've got new teams coming in, Players are going to be moving all over the place. So if you can protect guys like Cody Oaks, you're setting yourself up for victory. Yeah, especially with the, uh, we speculate at least two new teams in the FPHL next year. So uh, the two expansion teams this year, 
Blue Ridge and Baton Rouge will uh, likely have to leave some folks unprotected when unconfirmed, of course, but the Danville Dashers wins, they return, and of course it was, whether they wanted it to or not, it got out that the Athens Pro Hockey franchise will be joining the FPHL. Yes, and that's some new and developing news. Very exciting. We could very well see a Northern Division and a Southern Division making travel a lot easier and rivalries down south way more intense. And you put, theoretically, you'd put Danville in that Northern Division. Right. In Port Huron. Would move there. Right. So that would make things a lot more simple in terms of East-West travel with the Northern Division. And down south, well, you could very well have two teams in Louisiana if things get out of hand. You could. The uh, Monroe Moccasins have been, there's been rumblings about them making a comeback from the remnants of the WPHL, the Western Professional Hockey League. And that was the early 2000s, if I'm not mistaken. Late 90s, early 2000s. So there's a lot of hockey developing here. Now, in Monroe was State. in the same league as the uh, original team in Baton Rouge before they went and joined the ECHL, the Baton Rouge Kingfish. The Baton Rouge Kingfish. Now that's a name. Uh, as, if, as if moccasins, snake, not yeah, shoe. Not the shoe, the snake. The snake. Like the water moccasin. The water moccasin, yep. yes. The pond monster. We've heard Texas thrown around as well. We've heard the Brahmas make, maybe making a comeback. You know what? A team in Texas would be a perfect idea with the booming economy that Texas has. You combine that with a hockey program, well, an owner becomes quite wealthy, and now hockey gets brought to a very hot and also southern and western state. I mean, how far west can the FPHL go? Probably that far. Could they go to California? Maybe. I mean, <laughs> that'd be something. I mean, right, I-40 straight from Winston-Salem to... California, so. Yeah, I mean, interstate travel, that's that's basically an FPHL prerequisite. It is. 77 and 81 intersecting. Yeah. Boom, Blue Ridge comes along. Watch, now there's going to be a team at either end of I-40. The one city in California and then Wilmington, North Carolina. You watch. Could that be an I-40 rivalry? <laughs> the longest distance between rivals ever recorded? You, you, you're putting ideas out there. And I like them. I mean, whoever's listening, let's let's get to the uh, drawing table. Let's make some moves here. Goalies make great coaches. They do. And I am running for president. So. Oh yeah, somebody said they were writing you in for president. By the way. Yes. Yes. So what party are you running under? Uh, the party. Party party. Party party. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, it's going to be a new party. Uh, we're going to have pizza on Fridays. <laughs> I mean, vote for me, right? You get the pizza on coming. Friday. You get pizza on Fridays. I yeah. I mean. Uh, that, that gets the majority of everybody under 12, maybe Onboard. under 16. I mean, everybody loves pizza. Uh, everybody, period. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If anybody says no to free pizza, I don't know what they're doing. No, yeah, it, you're not a human. That's, that's how you test if somebody's human or not. Men in black style. So what you're saying is the next time that I hit one of those recapture things and it asks if I'm a robot, it's going to ask a yes or no question, do I like pizza? Yes, and, okay. it, and you know what happens if you put no. You're a robot. You're a robot. Automatically. That's right. No questions, ifs, ands, or buts. All right, we've joked around long enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to whatever <laughs> this has been. <laughs> a lot of opinions, a lot of things to say. Pizza purdy party. Pizza uh, purdy for president. A lot of hockey teams joining the FPHL and other leagues. Uh Whitfield, middle of two interstates. I mean, if you're taking notes, you got a pretty lengthy piece of paper. Yeah, going. your notepad's probably full at this point. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, it's the space. score of our game is one nothing, Bobcats. We'll take you around the FPHL scoreboard at our first intermission. Four other games to tell you about in the FPHL tonight. We'll also update you on of course March Madness ongoing. So we'll update you on the scores there, we've had some upsets along the way in that one. Everybody's brackets are probably doing fantastically awful, as is mine. Purdy didn't fill one out, so he's fine. Nope. Anyways. I'm too busy running for uh, office. Right, Brett. he's too busy running for president. Yep. He, he, he has no time for things as, as silly as, as that. But we're going to take a timeout. 
Come back. We'll come back, break down that first period, take you around the FPHL out-of-town scoreboard and update you on what's going on in March Madness as well. While we pay some bills here from our amazing sponsors and catch our breath, Bobcats lead it one nothing after one. Stick around. A lot more coming up. Hi, my name is Ryle Purdy, and I'm here speaking on behalf of... Hi, my name is Ryle Purdy, and I'm here speaking on behalf of ASD, also known as Autism Spectrum Disorder. It affects a wide range of people in this world, and oftentimes it makes them extra special and more beautiful as a person and an individual. Early detection of autism is essential. It affects one in 36 children across the globe and nailing it early is essential. That way it can be tendered and taken care of to create a beautiful flower rather than a beautiful disaster. Hey Bobcats fans, I'd like to invite you to come cheer us on Saturday night against the Danbury Hattricks to raise awareness for autism and promote acceptance while we wear these awesome jerseys. What's up, Bobcats fans? It's Joel Frazzi, number 17. We need you to pack the Apex Center this Saturday when we play Danbury. Hope to see you there. Hey, Bobcats fans. This is number 56, Blake Codmore. I just wanted to let you guys know to come out Saturday um, to our game against the Danbury Hattricks. We're going to be wearing these specialty jerseys to raise awareness for autism. Thanks, and see you there. Fans, uh, number 93, Carson Andrioli here. Just wanted you to know that we have a game coming up here against the Danbury Hattricks, and we will be wearing these great jerseys for autism awareness. Hope to see you there. Bobcats fans, this is number 44, Alex Lewinsky. Uh, come out this weekend, let's pack the barn and uh, raise awareness for autism. Early detection and intervention when it comes to autism spectrum disorder is so vitally important. I myself an example of that. I was diagnosed at age four and put on the autism spectrum, and if it weren't for someone noticing the warning signs early on, things like issues making eye contact, hyperfocus, sensitivity to lights, sounds, things like that, I don't think I'd be where I am today and functioning that at the level that I am today if it weren't for that. One in 36 children in the United States are on the autism spectrum. It's important to also note that autism is a spectrum. It's not linear, it's a wheel. Every person with autism is different. They go through different portions and different things at different times. Each person though has a unique set of skills and a unique set of circumstances that they are dealt with. We ask you to come out on Saturday night Help us advance our efforts to not only educate about early detection and intervention, how important it is, but educate those that autism is not a disease, it's a disorder. And it's nothing to be ashamed of and nothing to be afraid of. It's something to embrace. So come on out Saturday night, help us advance our efforts, educate, inspire, and push acceptance and awareness for autism so we take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion, Danbury Hattricks, on Saturday night. The Apex Center presents the Extreme International Ice Racing Series. The 2024 I the Apex Center presents the Extreme International Ice Racing Series. The 2024 I Did It My Way Tour. Right here in Whitville. Experience the thrills and action of ice racing up close and personal. For tickets, call 276-335. 2100. Visit the Apex Center box office during business hours or online via show pass. The Blue Ridge Bobcats are now offering season ticket lockdowns for 2024 2025 season ticket deposits. Lock down your spot in line when tickets go on sale. Current season ticket holders have first rights to positions on the list. 
will be able to put down their deposits beginning March 11th. New season ticket holders for 2024-25 can put their deposits down on March 25th for their place in line. Again, $50 deposits will begin being taken on March 11th, starting as low as $10 per ticket and $280 for the season plus fees. For more information, call us at 276-335-2100 or email Jenna Lewis at jlewis at blueridgebobcats.com or visit our website www.blueridgebobcats.com. I am Hitachi. Located in Bland, Virginia, we are committed to our employees and take pride that we are the employer of choice in the region. Hitachi Energy is a global leader in the design and manufacturing of clean, oil-free transformers. We adjust and stabilize the voltage of electricity flowing through the nation's power grid. Hitachi Energy is celebrating 50 years of serving Southern Virginia. Go to HitachiEnergy.com. I am Hitachi. Hitachi, inspire the next. The inaugural season of Blue Ridge Bobcats hockey is brought to you by Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville. At Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville, you'll always get the best price on a brand new Nissan. From the sleek design of the Altima, to the off-road power of the Titan, to the ever-versatile Rogue. New inventory is arriving weekly. Check us out at DutchMillerNissanOfWithville.com or stop by Dutch Miller anytime during business hours to test drive a Nissan and experience for yourself why Nissan has the innovation that excites. Imagine a place where small moments can lead to a life-changing impact. Where each interaction builds trust and sight. Where expertise leads to clarity. Where a small act of kindness can make all the difference. Vistar Eye Center. Putting you in focus. Hey guys, it's Colin down here at Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville, and I just noticed something terrible today in Withville. A lot of you are missing a very important part on your car that could be saving you thousands and losing you thousands if you don't have it. If you look right here, this is a Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville sticker. What that sticker means is a lot more than any other sticker. We have the widest selection of inventory, so you can find the perfect vehicle for you. Whether pre-owned or new, we have it here at Dutch Mill. The Sobe Law Firm and Michael J. Sobe, attorney at law, have been serving the people of Wythe County in Southwest Virginia for 25 years. With experience in both criminal and family law, Michael J. Sobe is here to serve you and meet your individual needs. Located on Main Street in Rural Retreat, call 276 686 6155 to schedule an appointment today. Mention the Bobcats and your consultation is absolutely free. That's right. Mention the Bobcats and your consultation is free. That number again, 276 686 6155. Sobe Law Firm, he'll help you out. Is winter weather taking a toll on your car's shine? Then pay a visit to Mountain Edge Car Wash. Located between Sheets and Bojangles off I-81 at exit 70, Mountain Edge offers a variety of washes for all vehicle types. Choose from simple washes like Base Camp and The Ascent to deluxe washes like The Screen, The Ridge, and The Summit. Premium washes include the Avalanche Ceramic Shield and a trip through Mountain Edge Falls. All washes feature tire shine, bug prep, and rain repellent, plus always free vacuums. Also ask about an unlimited wash membership with plans starting at just $19.99. Visit them today at 200 East Commonwealth Drive in Whitville or online at mountainedgecarwash.com. Personal relationship with our service advisors down here at Dutch Miller. They're with you all the time, 100%, and they keep your car and your mentality in perfect health. And behind the scenes, our service techs are hard at work making sure not only your personal vehicles, but all of our inventory in there is in perfect condition. They work tirelessly to get you the best. Here on the sales floor, our sales team is working tirelessly to make sure you have the perfect vehicle for you. They're constantly at their computers finding the perfect features, price, 
and size vehicles for you. So fix the problem your car has today. Get the Dutch Miller sticker, get better service, better care, and better quality out of your car. Come see me, Colin Ward, at Dutch Miller Nissan today to get the best deals and save yourself thousands of dollars down the road. Hey Bobcats fans, it's Johnny with Odell's Landscape and Lawn Care. Give us a call, 540-392-5052 or www.odellslawncare.com for all your landscape and lawn care needs. Uh, we are official sponsor and supporters of the Blue Ridge Bobcats. And as always, go Bobcats! Hey Bobcats fans, this is Clay Bush with 103 Towing and Recovery. I just want to take a second to remind you to please slow down and move over when you see flashing lights while working on the side of the road. For all your light duty towing needs and with Bill, please remember 276-613-0997. And if you have youth that are interested in playing hockey, please check out the Blue Ridge Youth Hockey Association on Facebook. Thank you. Go Bobcats. Shots read 12-11, Danbury after one, but the scoreboard reads 1-0, Bobcats after one. The goal from Vladislav Vlasov at 6.52 of the first, assisted by Delcourt and Nikita Ivashkin. The only goal of the period. Danbury 0 for 1 on the only power play either side of the period. Elmira and Port Huron tied at 2, 13 minutes into the second period. Watertown leads Binghamton 1-0, 11 minutes into the second. Carolina leads Baton Rouge 1-0 after one. And Columbus leads Motor City 2-0 after two. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Josh Newberg was to experience some fisticuffs tonight. Drop the mitts. He's been hitting the heavy bag all week, in fact. That he has. 12.15 p.m. rolls around, and you hear a dud, 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 jingle, 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 jingle. It's Josh Newberg beating the crap out of the heavy bag <laughs> on a regular basis. His last fight was uh, about a month ago now against the Port Huron Prowlers general manager, who was also a player, I might add. So it did take place in a game against Matt Graham. Yeah, he didn't just fight the coach. Or the, well, he did. He fought the coach and the GM and the leading point man. <laughs> That's and a one. trifecta. Martin drops it out top. Newberg sends it on. Tipped just wide by Sezinovitz, who tries to center for Ernst. And hoisted up and out by Danbury. Norwinski banks this ahead. Gonzalez back for Abdella. And Gonzalez once again. Up the wing, Daniel McKittrick. Into the slot, one timer high off the stick of Cunningham. LaBelle holds it in. Down low and around, Martin sends it up and out. Says Enovitz in a foot race for it. And LaBelle wins it and will get the icing call. 19.09 left. How's that corn dog, Purdy? Boston. <laughs> I, did, I, I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> oh my goodness. One would say, I have a corn dog problem, but to be honest, I don't have a problem with corn dogs at all. It's people that have a problem with you eating corn dogs. That's right. Martin, oh, nice reverse hit right there. Wooley went for the smack and ended up getting smacked. So Zenovitz along the far side sends it ahead, picked off by LaBelle, who walks down low. And a shot pad save made by Liskowitz, hoisted out by Martin. Icing. Danbury with the only two shots so far this Second period. Leon's doing his due diligence there, determining which players were on the ice and which ones weren't. It's the best call he's made all week. <laughs> you said it, not me. But I agree. Ernst 
Off the faceoff win by the Bobcats. Forces Enemitz now to his left for Norwinski. Intercepted by Dean Nicola. That one off the goal stick of Liskowitz. It stays in play. Says Enemitz. At his pocket picked by LaBelle. Fights through the check of Newberg. Sends it on. And a save made by Liskowitz once again. Out top. Dustin Henning. LaBelle shoots. Tipped in front. And set down the length of the ice. Will this go far enough? No. Joseph out of his net to play it. Dustin Henning. Sends it ahead. Tipped into the zone. Liskowitz will settle it behind the net for Delcart. He'll go D to D for Ivanov. Backhands it ahead. Ivoshkin. Ivoshkin walks down low. Protects the puck. Tried to drop it. Lost the handle. Vlasov pins a man up on the far side. Pass too far for Vlasov. Picked up by Tetro and moved in. Tetro knocked off it. Ivanov a bank pass taken by Delcart. He'll drop it back to Andre. Sends it ahead to Ivoshkin who tips it into the zone from the red line. Tattered in on the four check. Tetro banks it ahead. McKittrick three on two developing. McKittrick walks in. Shot blocked. Centering pass picked off by Ivoshkin. Who sends it ahead to Vlasov. To Ivanov. Across the line. Andre down low. Backhander off the side of the net. And backhanded out of danger and cleared. Delcart slams on the brakes. Finds some space. Now to Ford. He'll send this ahead. Tipped into the zone by Andreoli. Frazee racing in after it. Nearly caught Joseph napping. Gonzalez sends it up and out, but Daly on the intercept. Gonzalez returned the favor. Ratcliffe sends it into the cross side. Bohan has eyes on it. D to D Ford banks it ahead. Daly backhand pass looking for Frazee. He was checked by Abdella. Abdella around Daly with a pick from Ratcliffe. Abdella a shot, gloved by Liskowitz, and he's seen enough of that. As Daly and Ratcliffe had words there after the whistle. Bobcats win the draw in the defensive zone. Ford at his pocket pick though by Pam Lyon. Pinballing puck at the far side corner. Ford is tied up with Pam Lyon. DeNicola sends it on. What a stop. Liskowitz diving to get the whistle. And now Daly is involved. Ford is as well. Pam Lyon hit the deck. Oh, and Pamelaya takes a dive there. Olympic quality, and he's going to go off for that. Added to the box or the swim team tryouts? You tell me. Pamelaya, I'm looking like an Emmy Award winning actor there. I'll say. Perfect. Uh, Bait for the LCB crew to walk over and get their honorary And picture. onward they come. Looked like the ref made the signal for roughing, but you could have gotten him for roughing, you could have gotten him for embellishment. Either way, there was a penalty that half occurred. That's right. Pamela Ion disagreed with Justin Daly in the corner. Daly, however, eating the punches with uh, no response. Taking the Bobcats to the Hitachi Energy power play. Down low, Vlasov pocket picked by LaBelle, unable to clear. And now that pass by Andrioli was fanned on. Ruiz ahead, McKittrick checked by Bohan. Daly behind the net. He'll leave it for Bohan to start the breakout.
Dumped in by Tattered. Joseph plays it behind the net. Glove down by Tattered. Down low, Vlasov out top, Bohan. Walks the line, shoots, tip just wide. Tattered got a piece of it. Vlasov on the far side, half wall to Bohan. Slap pass, Daly. Daly back to Bohan. Down low, Daly centers, Tattered. To Bohan once again, skate to stick, keeps it alive. Vlasov on the far side. Trying the seam pass for Tattern. Picked up by McKittrick and out. Bohan gloves it down. And that one tipped, so no icing. Daly trying to keep it in with the skate, could not. Out of the zone it comes. 46 seconds on the power play as Gonzalez reads this pass. On over a shot, Zinchenko was stopped. By Liskowitz of the shorthanded chance. Now Daly picks it back up on the rush. Daly across the line for Martin. He'll slam on the brakes. Try and set it up. Norwinski, good play to keep it alive. Daly down low. Centers to Zinovitz. Couldn't get the shot away cleanly. Zyvoshkin was walking down the back door as well. Zinchenko shoots wide. 15 seconds left on the Pamela Ion penalty. Falanga will just dump this in with Zinchenko touching back up. Six seconds, Norwinski with three, with two, with one. Pamela Lyon is free, but so is Newberg down the near side. He'll slam on the brakes, Martin, one-timer, fanned on it. Banked up and out. Liskowitz plays this away from a hard-charging Barry. Martin up the wing. Newberg for Stephen Ford, he'll dump it in. Tetro behind the net. Backhands this ahead. Wooley. And his pass picked off by Bohan. Now Ford for Martin. Martin. Slap shot. Blocked. And up and out of play. That'll take us to our first media timeout of period number two. 13-17 left. Here in the second period, Bobcats continue to lead this one one to nothing. We're back after this. Wanna go somewhere amazing? Nice, right? But we're not there yet. Not this either. Still not it. Finding the next epic place isn't the point. In a Nissan Pathfinder, search is the adventure. Wouldn't you know the finest Bobcat swag in all the land? There's only one place to go, The Den at the Apex Center. The Den offers a full assortment of Bobcats merchandise, including hats, t-shirts, beanies, jackets, hoodies, jerseys, game memorabilia, cups, and so much more with prices affordable for all ages, sizes, and families, you'll be sure to gear up at the right place. Visit the den during business hours or on game nights. Back here inside the Apex Center alongside Ryle Purdy, I'm Brett Wiseman and a whistle right after the draw. Shot counter now reads 19-13 Danbury. And the faceoff right in front of the Bobcats bench in the neutral zone. It's won by the Hat Tricks. All the way down it comes. Ernst wins the foot race and gets the icing call. So back down to the attacking offensive zone we come. Both teams 0 for 1 on their respective only power plays to this point. Tom Lyon, he was a he was an angry elf, you could say. <laughs> Ratcliffe sends this into the zone. Ernst 
Held up from behind. Takes a spill and goes down. And McKittrick's going to hear about that. Dangerous play at that. Let's hope Ernst is okay. He's up on his on his knees at the moment, which is a good sign. Bobcats trainer, one of the best of the business, Josh Stevens. Alpha therapy at that. He, what a program he runs over there. Josh has taken great care of this entire Bobcats team and opposing teams when they come into the Apex Center. Getting a look at Matt right now. And it looked like McKittrick had a little bit of a tug of the jersey. It didn't look intentional or malicious at all. McKittrick was going to try and pin him to the boards, I think. That's why he was trying to get a grasp right there to try and pin him. Ernst looked like he lost an edge and just hit the deck. Definitely. Which and a lot I of times can happen in a foot race like that. You're getting pulled from behind a little bit. You're trying to kind of get to your toes instead of being on your heels to be ready for that board pin, and that's what can happen sometimes. Good to see Ernst up and skating off under his own power. Bedard shoots it wide. No, not Connor. I know we were all thinking it. Some of you were. Andrioli backhands this in. Speeds right to it on his own dump. And then throws Bedard around. Out top, Ford shoots deflected wide. Ford on the pinch, keeps it alive. LaBelle behind the net for Bedard. Hit by Frazee. Woolley gets it out. Past Bohan, Ford on the D cycle. Bohan to Daly. Backhand of the head, Ford. Tipped it, Frazee tried to send it on. Picked up by LaBelle. LaBelle in his own end with it. Fumbled it for the moment. Sends it on, picked off. Frazee flies in, shot wide. Ivanov held it in for the moment and still does. Vlasov hops to it. He was held up from behind and it comes out into the neutral zone. Delcourt will dump this in off the stanchion. Ivoshkin picks it up. Tried to drop it to Vlasov but picked up by Danbury and out. Delcourt in a foot race with Falanga. Delcourt wins it. Boy, look at Falanga with that speed there. Igor across looking for Tattered. Couldn't handle it. Pass ahead now, Falanga crunched by Delcourt. That was Danikola who actually took that hit. 18, not 10. Vlasov trying to muscle it out, could not. And now brought back in. Here's a shot by Henning. Stopped by Liskowitz with the chest. Tell you what, you can't shoot the puck through the goalie. Liskowitz proving that theory. Twentieth shot of the night so far for Danbury, but Liskowitz, you know, I mentioned his positioning back in the first period. Pretty much a carbon copy in, in that aspect so far here in the second. Liskowitz definitely. Showing up tonight, ready to roll. Norwinski unable to clear. Newberg pinned Ratcliffe up. Ernst is back out there. That is fantastic to see. Newberg bank feet ahead, read by Henning. And then Newberg hit the deck as he and Henning collided. Martin ahead, Newberg. Chases in after it. Takes a bit of a chicken wing right there from Tetro. As now Ratcliffe has it. Ratcliffe sends it ahead. Norwinski sticks it out of midair. Head up. He'll drop it for Ernst. For Sazenovitz. Walks across the line. Slams on the brakes. Down the wall, Norwinski. Now Ruiz banks it up. Not out. Max holds it in for the moment. But it's picked up now by Corey Cunningham. Cunningham. Down the near side wing. Checked by his opposite number, Frazee. Martin able to tap it out of the zone. Dumped back in by Gonzalez. Liskowitz out of his net to play it. 
Norwinski sends it ahead. Daly couldn't quite handle it cleanly, but he works it free. Daly down the near side. Was checked from behind. Still got it. Daly centers it. Loose puck. Trickles through the blue paint and wide. Bohan trying to go down low. Picked off by Danbury and cleared out. Ford will send it ahead. Daly. Pass a little bit too far. Gonzalez for Abdella. Abdella through the neutral zone. To his left, Woolley. Sends it wide of the net. Barry drops it. Woolley fights around the check of Andreoli. Woolley centers. Barry was tied up, and then Woolley was given a rough ride by Andreoli. Backhand to the head, looking for Andreoli. He'll send it into the zone. 8.45 left. Abdella. Boy, did Andreoli drop the boom behind the net there. That he did. Zinchenko sends it ahead. Nice read by Ivanov to pick that off. Blasts off a shot. Oh, just wide. Was there some steam on that or what? That was a heat-seeking missile from love, Vlad Etchkin. Love to see the exit velocity on that one. Woo. I'm thinking 95 miles an hour plus. Zinchenko's shot is blocked. It's in place still. Falanga cycles it low. Too far for the intended target. Newberg picks it up. Thought he had a defenseman there. He didn't. Now that shot off the side of the post. Newberg with a good hit behind the net. Now played up to Ivoskin and out. Danger averted. Ivoskin crossing paths with Vlasov. Stick handles down low. Finds some space to work with and takes a penalty. Yep, there's a trip. We'll see who it's on. I think it's going to be on LaBelle. Well, bring out the power play, bring out the shovel kids, and bring out the Lexington Church Bar. Two for tripping on LaBelle. As the Pepsi t-shirt toss is commencing. Here at the Apex Center. Bobcat set to go to work here on the power play for the second time tonight, Purdy. Some good, some not so on that first power play. No shots, but there were some good chances. There was some good structure to it, but what do the Bobcats need to do here on the second power play? Well, it's, it's going to need to boil down to simple passes. Guys in the right spots at the right time. I mean, you pass the puck, you move your feet. It's a give and go just about everywhere. It, whether you're a forward or a defenseman, the MO is the same. You get the puck, you move the puck, you move. Get to an open spot, put that puck on net with traffic, tra chase the rebound and crash the net. Now the stats might not show it because a few of the power play goals were incorrectly inputted as even strength. So while it may say 10% on the league website, our math says... 12, maybe 13%. And the Bobcats special teams has been improving as the year's gone on. Finding their stride as of late, putting up numbers on the power play and penalty kill respectively. Bobcats win the draw, but they won it too cleanly. Bohan sends it ahead. Dumped into the zone now by Tatter. Second Hitachi Energy power play of the night. Daly could not quite keep it alive. Ruiz chasing after this shorthanded now. Liskowitz plays it around for Zach Tatter. Tatter back for Bohan. And they'll start the rush around McKittrick. Bohan with a pick from Blasoff at the line. Stops up out top. Chips it down low. Intercepted but gloved down by Tatter and kept alive. Tattered hops on it. Vlad to Bohan. Waits. Shoots just wide. Andrioli's got the rebound. Daly to Andrioli. Out top. Bohan walks the line. Looking for a shooting lane. None there. Blasts off outside the dot. Trying to go seam pass. Not there. Daly dusts the man off. Backdoor. Blasts off. Shot blocked. And held on to by Joseph. And what an opportunity for Vlasov. 
in the Vladechkin position. He doesn't miss that shot often. However, a bobbling puck made it a little more difficult than he imagined. Joseph coming up big on that one. Yeah, Vlad didn't nearly get all of that he wanted to on it, but it almost worked in his favor. Yeah, sometimes when you throw a curveball and the goal is expecting a fastball, well, better results can happen. Bobcats win the draw. Under a minute to go on the power play. Ivashkin out there with Norwinski, Newberg, Sazenovitz, and Martin. Ivashkin to his left. Martin on the near side, walks the wall. Waiting, assessing, out top Norwinski. Now to Ivashkin, skate to stick on the far side. Seam pass, Martin. Slap shot, blocker save. Made by Joseph. Ivashkin keeps it alive for the moment, but Zinchenko able to clear. Really good. Waffle board save there by Joseph. Tracking that one all the way to the hand. Norwinski between the hash marks in his own end. Drops it Newberg to the left. Sazenovitz. Sazenovitz across the line. Drop feed out top. Newberg. Now Ivoshkin. Seam pass Martin. Norwinski at the point to Martin. Back to Norwinski. One timer tip just wide. Ivoshkin's on it. LaBelle is free. Martin with Rome. Ivoskin fanned on it. Nikita back on the loose puck. Drops it, Norwinski. He'll shoot, Joseph. Makes the chest save, and he'll hang on to it. 5.32 to go here in the second. A good showing for the Bobcats power play. Not converting on that one, but Still, a lot of good points to take from that. Zach Tattern saving the offensive play, catching the puck in the middle of the ice, put it down, kept the offense rolling for another 30 seconds. That was just one of the components of that power play. The quick passes of Norwinski and Daniel Martin proved to, well, thwart the defense of the hat tricks. Almost like they were, as you said earlier, traffic cones. The same color as well. Danbury wins the draw in the defensive zone. Ratcliffe on the near side, sends it ahead, Wooley. Chipped it over top of the net. Ratcliffe pivots on Daly to the point, Bedard. Bedard a shot, tipped in front. Now Andrioli speeds back ahead with Daly to his right. Andrioli chips this around LaBelle, slams on the brakes, Ernst. Shoots off the pad of Joseph. That was a shot for a rebound right there. Ernst with the high IQ play there. Puck da off pad. Daly with the intercept in a neutral zone. Sends this ahead. LaBelle with the intercept. Off the leg pad of Ratcliffe. And picked up now by four. Danbury will change. Bobcats will catch a minute. Frazee beaten on the back check by Bedard. Now set ahead by... Zinchenko and Ernst will send this down and this will be an icing call. With 4.28 remaining in period number two. Bobcats still lead it, one nothing. We're back with the final four minutes and change of the second period right after this. The Apex Center presents the Extreme International Ice Racing Series. The 2024 I Did It My Way Tour, right here in Whitville. Experience the thrills and action of ice racing up close and personal. For tickets, call 276-335-2100. Visit the Apex Center box office during business hours or online via show pass.
Back here inside the Apex Center alongside Ryle Purdy. I'm Brett Wiseman. Bobcats holding a 1-0 lead on the Danbury Hat Tricks with 4.28 to go here in period two. Hat Tricks win the draw, Pam Lyon. Now a seam pass over for Tetro, a shot tipped on. Penalty coming up on the Bobcats as bodies collide to the glove side of Liskowitz. It's gonna be a trip on, I believe that's Frazee. Joel. Was, he was trying to keep Danikola from hopping on that rebound. Yeah, Joel went down hard with that one too. Joel's a tough kid. He's playing with stitches in his mouth from a uh, recent upper body injury. 418 left and now for the second time, the Bobcats do the Hitachi Energy penalty kill. McKittrick at the point, now LaBelle fakes it. Ruiz takes it, blocked in front. LaBelle can't hold it in. Tell you what, Liskowitz has X-ray vision tonight. Hey, well, I don't know how he saw through that bus depot in front of the net right there. Now that looked like 77 and 81 interchanging. <laughs> Ruiz through the neutral zone. Entry gained by Cunningham down low. Backdoor pass for Ruiz, too hot to handle. McKittrick for Cunningham to the point. LaBelle fakes it. McKittrick walks outside the dots. LaBelle slap pass Ruiz. Fanned on it. And Cunningham slung down by Ford. Andrioli unable to clear. LaBelle used his size to keep that alive. Barry McKittrick touched over to Cunningham. Two hat tricks friendly fired each other on the other side. Ruiz down low. Barry to the point. LaBelle. Minute gone, a minute to go on the power play. LaBelle, shot, save made. The rebound kicks out to McKittrick who shoots and misses wide. Barry has it on the far side, outside the dot, LaBelle. McKittrick waits back to LaBelle. Fakes it, McKittrick, seam pass. Barry, shot, stopped. Loose on the far side, picked up by Cunningham. Back out top, LaBelle. Bobcats have been hemmed in. McKittrick a shot, Liskowitz makes the stop and gets the whistle. And the fans loving it. A big kill so far for the Bobcats. Killing off one minute and 37 seconds of that power play. For the hat tricks. And the hat tricks were looking for the, for the low guy there on the quick dish. Shot on goal, and well, either that hit bodies in front or Liskowitz. Either way, keep on chugging. Tie up on the draw. Norwinski eventually pulls it out of the mass of humanity and off the glass into the netting. Do note that hit the glass before the netting. Yes. Thus, it will not be a penalty. Correct. Had that puck hit the netting first, it yes. would be a penalty. And that's a call we've seen often in this Apex With the center. short glass. Very short glass, often leading to a puck hitting where you think there would be glass, but now instead net. And if you're in the D zone, well, two minute penalty. Danny Martin's able to clear, 10 seconds left. On the tripping call to Freezy, make that five. 55, Pamela Lyon through the neutral zone. Checked by Martin. Pass is blocked, and now a break the other way. Newberg. Shoots, save made by Joseph as Frazee was free out of the box as well. Now a chance the other way, let's do it. Shut it down with the pad. Pam Lyon, Gonzalez, just wide. Centering feed, nets off its moorings. And a much needed whistle as Falanga with words for Liskowitz. Good to see Liskowitz mixing it up there. 
He's a big boy, and well, if you Google Owen Liskowitz and then go to videos, you can see why Owen Liskowitz is one not to take lightly, as he's been in a goalie fight before and definitely welcoming any players who would like to fight in the future. I think he does have an actual fight to his record against Trevor Babin. That's right, and he kicked Babin's butt. That he did. Frazee, that was high sticked, I believe. So bring it back the other way. Well, the buck 44 to go. Neutral zone draw up coming. Barry V. Tattered in the dock. As Zinchenko and Vlasov are hacking and whacking at one another. And thus are separated. Danbury wins the draw. Bedard's pass is blocked. Zinchenko sends it in with a hit from Delcart to boot. Tattered all the way around, touched by Ivashkin, but it'll go all the way down and be an icing call. Ivashkin not getting his stick on it before the, uh, or well, after the red line. Now the clock never started here in the arena. And they've now reset it to where it should be at a minute 29. Clock starting and not starting on time is not unfamiliar to the Danbury hat tricks if you watched the Commissioner's Cup final last year. Bedard knocked off it by Vlasov. Now Ivanov is in the midst of a scrum for it. Pops free to the far side. Ivashkin backhand pass taken by Tattern and chipped out. Tattern sends it in. Play is onside. 70 seconds left, second period. Joseph for LaBelle. Through the middle, Zinchenko retreats in front of his goaltender. Plays it around Daly. Now DiNicola had it picked off. Daly walks in, shoots off the arm of Joseph. Still in, though. Frazee with a tap at it. LaBelle sends it all the way down, and that will be an icing call with 43.8 remaining. Bedard and Daly mixing it up a little bit there. Daly probably saying, hey, I missed that one, but I'm not going to miss next time. Bobcats win the draw. Ford, Bohan fanned on it. Keeps it alive down low. Bedard knocked off it by Daly. Andrioli in the final half minute of the middle frame. Pivots on LaBelle. Andrioli leaves it Frazee for Daly. Daly, shot was blocked, keeps it alive. Daly checked, leaves it, Ford, 17, 16, all the way around. Daly on it, finds some space, shot, glove save, Joseph. With 8.3 to go. A glove save and a beauty for Joseph. Daly, a sniper. And he doesn't miss often. No, he doesn't. Justin Daly spending a lot of the uh, season up in Roanoke this year. Time in along. Fayetteville as well. Yep, Fayetteville as well. With the marksman. No stranger to the SPHL. 10 goals, 10 assists, 20 points on the year for him with the Bobcats. So Zenovitz out top, Norwinski shot blocked. Now a potential break the other way for McKittrick but he ran out of room and out of time. And he ran into Max Sazanovic, who said, well, you're not going this way. Rousing applause from the fans here at the Apex Center, who have been loud all night long. We end the second the same as we began it. With a 1-0 score, 
Shot counter reads 25, Danbury 21, Blue Ridge. But the Bobcats on top after a scoreless second period. The goal by Vlasov about halfway through the first remains the only scoring to this point here on this one and what's really been pretty a, a tight checking game. Yeah, there's been a lot of physicality from both teams here. And it's, it's not just lay the other guy out physicality, it's a smart, Pinch, I mean, guys are just taking away space. Right. And when you when you rub a guy off onto the boards, it's it's going to eliminate that player from the play, and thus the puck the puck doesn't stop; it keeps moving. So there's been a lot of up and down the ice, back and forth and back and forth, and uh, neutral zone game. Well, you can often see it decided by a quick break up the ice, shot on goal, puck goes in. That can often decide a game, and we've seen that at every level of hockey. And, you know, it may sound like coach speak, but when you talk about taking time and space away from the opposition, the Bobcats have done a really good job, especially through the neutral zone, and that was stressed throughout the week. Ted, for the defensive core, everybody really, forwards included, to be strong in between those blue lines and they have not allowed Danbury a whole lot of clean entries into the zone. We haven't seen a whole lot of breaks or a lot of wide open play. We've seen a break here, a break there, a three on two here, a two on one there. But both teams really, I think, doing a great job of controlling the gaps, not allowing either side a whole lot of space to work with. And when you do that, Purdy, you talked about, you know, rubs along the wall, board pins, but it's also stick positioning in the neutral zone. It's reading the passing lanes. This has just been a very technically sound defensive hockey game so far. And the best defense is offense, but in this case, the Blue Ridge defense is playing so well that the offense doesn't have to work as hard because, well, they're blocking shots, and when you're in D mode, I mean, you're blocking shots, you're sticks and lanes, and when the break comes, you take it. But a defensively sound team, especially technically sound, it, it's going to be lights out if, if this carries on. As you said, the best defense is a good offense. And against a team like Danbury, they are the defending champions after all. You can't be comfortable with a one goal lead. No, this is a, a game that needs to see two to three, maybe even four put up. I mean, the first team to five wins in the FPHL, unofficial rule. But, um, the Danbury Hattricks, they have no shortage of scoring talent. I mean, look at Johnny Ruiz. And look at how, you know, how these teams match up head to head here. I mean, Danbury's averaging almost four goals a game. So really you say first to four. First to four for Danbury. I mean, they could score. Holy smokes, can they put the puck in the back of the net? You talked about Johnny Ruiz, there's his numbers. 46 games played, 30, 33 goals, 30 assists for 63 points. <laughs> He's a point per game plus. Plus that. Plus that. So you combine that with speed and skill that this Danbury Hattricks team brings to the table, and it's, <laughs> it's a recipe for victory until you run into Owen Liskowitz. Well, we're going to take a timeout. We'll come back, break down that second period, and take you around our out-of-town scoreboard, both in the FPHL for the games to tell you about and uh, get you an update on March Madness. Vermont has Duke on the ropes. We'll tell you more about that when we come back. Bobcats lead it 1-0 after 2. We're back right after this. My name is Ryle Purdy, and I'm here speaking on behalf of ASD, also known as Autism Spectrum Disorder. It affects a wide range of people in this world, and oftentimes it makes them extra special and more beautiful as a person and an individual. I think early detection of autism is essential. It affects one in 36 children across the globe, and nailing it early is essential. That way it can be tendered and taken care of to create a beautiful flower rather than a beautiful disaster. 
Hey Bobcats fans, I'd like to invite you to come cheer us on Saturday night against the Danbury Hattricks to raise awareness for autism and promote acceptance while we wear these awesome jerseys. What's up, Bobcats fans? It's Joel Frazzi, number 17. We need you to pack the Apex Center this Saturday when we play Danbury. Hope to see you there. Hey, Bobcats fans. This is number 56, Blake Codmore. I just wanted to let you guys know to come out Saturday um, to our game against the Danbury Hattricks. We're going to be wearing these specialty jerseys to raise awareness for autism. Thanks, and see you there. Fans, uh, number 93, Carson Andrioli here. Just wanted you to know that we have a game coming up here against the Danbury Hattricks, and we will be wearing these great jerseys for autism awareness. Hope to see you there. Bobcats fans, this is number 44, Alex Rewinski. Uh, come out this weekend, let's pack the barn and uh, raise awareness for autism. Early detection and intervention when it comes to autism spectrum disorder is so vitally important. I myself an example of that. I was diagnosed at age four and put on the autism spectrum, and if it weren't for someone noticing the warning signs early on, things like issues making eye contact, hyperfocus, sensitivity to lights, sounds, things like that, I don't think I'd be where I am today and functioning that at the level that I am today if it weren't for that. One in 36 children in the United States are on the autism spectrum. It's important to also note that autism is a spectrum. It's not linear, it's a wheel. Every person with autism is different. They go through different portions and different things at different times. Each person though has a unique set of skills and a unique set of circumstances that they are dealt with. We ask you to come out on Saturday night Help us advance our efforts to not only educate about early detection and intervention, how important it is, but educate those that autism is not a disease, it's a disorder. And it's nothing to be ashamed of and nothing to be afraid of. It's something to embrace. So come on out Saturday night, help us advance our efforts, educate, inspire, and push acceptance and awareness for autism as we take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion, Danbury Hattricks, on Saturday night. The Blue Ridge Bobcats are now offering season ticket lockdowns for 2024-2025 season ticket deposits. Lock down your spot in line when tickets go on sale. Current season ticket holders have first rights to positions on the list and will be able to put down their deposits beginning March 11th. New season ticket holders for 2024-25 can put their deposits down on March 25th for their place in line. Again, $50 deposits will begin being taken on March 11th starting as low as $10 per ticket and $280 for the season, plus fees. For more information, call us at 276-335-2100 or email Jenna Lewis at jlewis at blueridgebobcats.com or visit our website, www.blueridgebobcats.com. The Apex Center presents the Extreme International Ice Racing Series. The 2024 I Did It My Way Tour, right here in Whitville. Experience the thrills and action of ice racing up close and personal. For tickets, call 276-335-2100. Visit the Apex Center box office during business hours or online via show pass.
I am Hitachi. Located in Bland, Virginia, we are committed to our employees and take pride that we are the employer of choice in the region. Hitachi Energy is a global leader in the design and manufacturing of clean, oil-free transformers. We adjust and stabilize the voltage of electricity flowing through the nation's power grid. Hitachi Energy is celebrating 50 years of serving Southern Virginia. Go to HitachiEnergy.com. I am Hitachi. Hitachi, inspire the next. The inaugural season of Blue Ridge Bobcats hockey is brought to you by Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville. At Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville, you'll always get the best price on a brand new Nissan. From the sleek design of the Altima, to the off-road power of the Titan, to the ever-versatile Rogue. New inventory is arriving weekly. Check us out at DutchMillerNissanOfWithville.com or stop by Dutch Miller anytime during business hours to test drive a Nissan and experience for yourself why Nissan has the innovation that excites. Imagine a place where small moments can lead to a life-changing impact. Where each interaction builds trust and sight. Where expertise leads to clarity. Where a small act of kindness can make all the difference. Vistar Eye Center. Putting you in focus. Hey guys, it's Colin down here at Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville, and I just noticed something terrible today in Withville. A lot of you are missing a very important part on your car that could be saving you thousands and losing you thousands if you don't have it. If you look right here, this is a Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville sticker. What that sticker means is a lot more than any other sticker. We have the widest selection of inventory, so you can find the perfect vehicle for you. Whether pre-owned or new, we have it here at Dutch Mill. The Sobe Law Firm and Michael J. Sobe, attorney at law, have been serving the people of Wythe County in Southwest Virginia for 25 years. With experience in both criminal and family law, Michael J. Sobe is here to serve you and meet your individual needs. Located on Main Street in Rural Retreat, call 276-686-6155 to schedule an appointment today. Mention the Bobcats and your consultation is absolutely free. That's right. Mention the Bobcats and your consultation is free. That number again, 276-686-6155. Sobe Law Firm, he'll help you out. Is winter weather taking a toll on your car's shine? Then pay a visit to Mountain Edge Car Wash. Located between Sheets and Bojangles off I-81 at exit 70, Mountain Edge offers a variety of washes for all vehicle types. Choose from simple washes like Base Camp and The Ascent to deluxe washes like The Scream, The Ridge, and The Summit. Premium washes include the Avalanche Ceramic Shield and a trip through Mountain Edge Falls. All washes feature tire shine, bug prep, and rain repellent, plus always free vacuums. Also ask about an unlimited wash membership with plans starting at just $19.99. Visit them today at 200 East Commonwealth Drive in Withville or online at mountainedgecarwash.com. Personal relationship with our service advisors down here at Dutch Miller. They're with you all the time, 100%, and they keep your car and your mentality in perfect health. And behind the scenes, our service techs are hard at work making sure not only your personal vehicles, but all of our inventory in there is in perfect condition. They work tirelessly to get you the best. Here on the sales floor, our sales team is working tirelessly to make sure you have the perfect vehicle for you. They're constantly at the computers finding the perfect features, price, and size vehicles for you. So fix the problem your car has today. Get the Dutch Miller sticker, get better service, better care, and better quality out of your car. Come see me, Colin Ward, at Dutch Miller Nissan today to get the best deals and save yourself thousands of dollars down the road. Looking to own the finest Bobcat swag in all the land? There's only one place to go. 
The Den at the Apex Center. The Den offers a full assortment of Bobcats merchandise, including hats, t-shirts, beanies, jackets, hoodies, jerseys, game memorabilia, cups, and so much more. With prices affordable for all ages, sizes, and families, you'll be sure to gear up at the right place. Visit the Den during business hours or on game nights. The Blue Ridge Bobcats are proud to announce the grand opening of the Bobcats Beer Garden. Located behind Section 109 at the Apex Center and now open for all Bobcats home games. The Bobcats Beer Garden offers a wide variety of options, including old favorites and new beverage options that you're sure to enjoy. The Bobcats Beer Garden is the perfect place to gather with friends during the game and drink the coldest beverages around while you enjoy the coolest game on earth. Want to go somewhere amazing? Nice, right? But we're not there yet. Not this either. Still not it. Finding the next epic place isn't the point. And a Nissan Pathfinder? Search is the adventure. Green jerseys, green light. Ruiz and Newberg with some pushing and shoving off the draw as this one dumped in. They're still having words. Ernst sweeps it out of the danger zone of the blue paint. Abdella holds it in. Newberg ahead to Martin. He'll muscle his way down the near side half ports. Checked off it. Thrown to the wall. And now McKittrick loves this down but had his pocket picked by Sezenovitz who dumps it in. Joseph out of his net to play it, he'll leave it. Gonzalez for Ratcliffe. And now dumped in by Ruiz and the Danbury captain will get off. Bohan hops on. With Ford, Andrioli, Daly, and Frazee. Andrioli, pass was blocked. Daly worked it free from Barry, but LaBelle dumps it back in. Ford sends it ahead, tapped on to Daly. Daly pivots on LaBelle. 
Waits for reinforcements. Drop Frazee. A shot blocked off the pad of Joseph. Now LaBelle stretches it too far. Foot race. Liskowitz. The whistle came right as he went to play it. So we should have a faceoff at center, I would believe. Yep, as the ref is indicating. Looks like we're gonna get this one at center ice. It was coming back on goal, so it, even if Liskowitz didn't try and play that, it wouldn't have been an icing regardless. It really shouldn't have been because the foot race was even. Right, and that's a 50-50 puck, and uh, more times than not, you'll see a ref let that one go. The linesman deciding, no, I will not. And then he was overruled. Precisely. LaBelle, D to D pass. Oh, turned over. He blew a tire. Blast off, centers it. Ivoskin fakes the slap shot, hits the deck. Vlad in the far side corner to Delcart. Ivanov waits, down low, tattered. Blast off, bank feed out top. Delcart walks the line. Blast off, a shot, save made. Rebound there, tattered trying to chisel it around LaBelle. LaBelle works it away from him and sends it ahead. Kept alive by Ivoskin. His pocket was picked by Falanga. Ivoskin right back on it. Ivoskin, blast off! Save made by Joseph. Joseph read that one like a book, making yep. a really good chest save on that one. Vlad tried to go under the arm right there. That one had to have hurt. Now LaBelle behind the net will try and start the breakout as the Bobcats match up man to man. LaBelle starts the engine. Watched by Newberg, stretch pass ahead, Ratcliffe. Threw that one behind his intended target. And now tipped up and out of play is Newberg. Broke that play up at the red line. Andrioli with his first save of the night on the bench. Making a glove save on that souvenir puck. And Connor Green has just received a hat upgrade on the bench. I noticed that. He's gone from the traditional blue hat to a solid green. Top all, hat. Fedora, top fedora, hat. Fedora, top hat, something. Something. Either way, very stylish, very green. Blake Cudmore is the one that gave it to him. Connor Green wearing green. Ah, ah, Holy fitting. smokes. Oh, good hit right there by Sezenovitz. Now two on two the other way. Norwinski's clearance attempt was blocked. Ratcliffe knocked off it by Newberg. Martin's pass was tipped at the line. Friendly fire between hat tricks. Sent down low by Barry, who took Newberg's stick with him. And now Bohan will kill some time behind the net. Andrioli. Three and a half gone by, third period. Away from Cunningham. Andrioli sends it ahead, Frazee. Down low, Andrioli. Behind the net, throws it to the point. Bohan walks in, shoots, tip just wide. And that took a wild bounce on that. That it to did. That. Ford goes D to D, Bohan. Back to Ford. Sends it ahead, Frazee. With Andrioli to his right, fights down low, held up, penalty coming, delayed call. Sent around by Daly. Ivanov hops to it. Goes D to D, Ford will have to recover. Tatterns the extra attacker, six on five. Ford behind his own net, watched by Connor Woolley. Now to Tattern for Ivoshkin. Ivoshkin, no touch yet. Down low, knocked off it by LaBelle, who slings Ivoshkin down. And the touch made by Danbury. Tripping the call on Gonzalez at 4.29 in the third period.
And for the third time tonight, the Bobcats to the Hitachi Energy Power Play. And like we mentioned earlier, Brett, this uh, Bobcats power play has been experiencing success as of late. We'll see if they can continue it on here. Now a stretch pass ahead. Acts more as a clearance as Ruiz was leaking behind. Worked it free and backhanded it high. That escalated quickly. Andrioli will drop this for Bohan. Ruiz forechecking shorthanded. Tatter, cross ice feet, picked off. Barry shoots, blocker to side by Liskowitz. Really good save there by Liskowitz, tracking that one all the way to the blocker. Dan Barry's been able to kill the first 40 seconds here. Tatter down low, finds some space to work with. Protects it on the backhand. To the point, Bohan, Andrioli. Below the goal line, Ivoska in front. Tatter tipped it just wide. Daly recovers into the far side corner. To the point, Bohan. Point to point, Andrioli walks down the wall. Trying to leave it for Ivoskin. Pass was tipped. Daly had it go between his legs. And now a two on one, shorthanded the other way. Barry waits. Shut down by Liskowitz. And then Daly hits the deck. Picked up by Sezenovitz. Six minutes gone by here in the third. 30 seconds left on this power play here. And Ooh. Daly giving a rough ride right there by Falanga. Danbury turns it over and dumps it in. 15 seconds left of the power play. Martin for Ivoshkin. 10 seconds. Ivoshkin speeds ahead. Down the near side. Back of the goal. Takes the hit to make the play. Ford to Norwinski. One-timer, Max, just wide. I believe Joseph got a piece of that with the pad. Norwinski keeps it alive. Ivoshka throws the weight around. Whoa, what a hit right there by Sasenovitz. Now a chance in front. Oh, Martin and Ivoshka play catch, but couldn't get the shot away. And now Ivoshka hits the deck. And that's a classless play right there. I believe that was 71. That was Tetro. I've Oskins up to his knees. That's a good sign. And he skate off under his own power. We'll keep it here during this media timeout. Yeah, Purdy, see if we can see what happened there. The hit by Sezenovitz. Puck was loose. Martin and Ivoski played catch. And it looked like... A little stick play there by yeah. Tetro. Not quite sure where that stick impacted Ivoski. And we're going to slow it down and take a look It looked like he caught him it. in the mouth, maybe. It might have been it's Under either the chin. mouth or midsection. Right there. Yeah, yep. it looks like head contact from Tetro. We're gonna watch this one back one more time. Yeah, we'll here. keep it here during the media timeout. So puck on net, a little bit of a bounce there. That, that was a really good opportunity that was. to score. Um, just missed it, however. So the puck's going up ice. Ivashkin cuts to the middle of the ice. Tetro, his hands are up high. He catches Ivashkin, not in the midsection, but more or less around the head area, um, a vulnerable area that's not a place you normally want to make a play on a guy. Um, we'll look for a response here, Josh Newberg. He skated over immediately, yeah. Immediately went after Tetro. Um, nothing came of that. However, there's a lot of time left in the game. Josh Newberg is on the ice. We'll see. No penalty coming from that either. 
So we will have a face-off here in the neutral zone. And you know what that means? If there's no penalty awarded on a play that usually deserves a penalty. That means that the players feel they have to police that themselves. So we'll look here to see the Bobcats deliver justice. Just as uh, Max Sazanovitz recently delivered justice through his shoulder into the hat trick's chest. Ruiz and Newberg are tied up. They won't drop him yet. Cunningham crunched by Ernst. McKittrick trying to center on the pinch. Shoveled in front. Liskowitz slept to the side. Martin drops to a knee. Newberg sends it around. McKittrick couldn't handle it. Norwinski sends it up. Ruiz gloves it down. Ruiz, slap shot wide. Sazenovitz trying to hop on it. Ernst blocks the shot from the point. Walks up the wall with it. Ernst. Stick handles his way around a couple of defenders. Down low, slams on the brakes. Says that if it's a shot, stick save. Made by Joseph. Now Daly knocked off it by Pam Lyon. And Ernst had to get off for a change there. And Ford will hop on. Pass was blocked. And now Listowitz will have to hop out, cut down the angle. Bohan stretched ahead. Daly, <laughs> puck hopped off his stick. That close. Dumped in by Wooley, now Bohan around the wall and out. Gonzalez knocked off it by Daly. Andrioli walks in, shoots, blocker save, Joseph. Daly holds the line, smacks it down low. All the way around it comes, Ford watches it come to his twig. Andrioli knocked off it by Abdella. Ratcliffe finds a man, that's Gonzalez, he'll dump it in and get off. Shots now even at 26 by our count. Ivanov will start the breakout. Delcart ahead. Blasts off. Speeds into the zone. Puck pinballs right on. And Frazee is stopped. As it pinballed off the toe of the blade of Vlasov. And it came oh so perfectly to the... Stick of Joel Frazee, and Joel. he was inches away. Oh, was he close to that one. Looking skyward after that. I mean, it, it wasn't a perfect perfect puck for him, but a one on oh, I mean, you can't ask for a better opportunity there. Newberg will take the draw. Sazenovitz to the point, Ernst. Norwinski touches it down low. Newberg held up from behind, left it for Martin. Martin along the half wall. Down low, Sazenovitz hit the deck. Newberg recovers. Joseph out of his net to play this. Picked up by Ernst as Joseph was tied up with Newberg. <laughs> Joseph took a, a, a swimming class dive there. Norwinski intercepts and dumps it in. Glove down by Abdella, behind the net. Bank pass ahead. Cunningham just dumps it in. Pass for Frazee's picked off. Cunningham back in, read by Andrioli and cleared. Frazee hops to it. LaBelle with the poke. Barry down the near side. Backhander stopped by Liskowitz. Ford walls his man off and banks it up and out. Pamela Lyon sends it ahead. Ratcliffe couldn't handle it. Norwinski unable to clear. Ford now behind his own net with it. Hounded by Barry. Ford works away from him. Help from Norwinski. Ford up the wing. Andrioli can't get it out. Ratcliffe. Tetro a shot off the pad. Aliskowitz it stays out. Multi-man curling match now. In the far side corner, it pops free. And Norwinski digs it out of the rugby scrum and speeds ahead. Over the stick of Tetro, so no icing. Joseph will settle it. Tetro to his left. Falanga 
for Woolley. Woolley trying to send it on to Tetro, who got a cross check on Igor right there as those two went at it. Woolley centers. Falanga couldn't handle the pass. 8.45 left. LaBelle behind the net. Now hoisted ahead by the Bobcats, but picked up by Zinchenko. Ivanov with a good read there at the red line. Touched into the zone. Liskowitz will settle it. Delcourt. For Ivanov. Now this pass behind Ivashkin. He's offside. Zinchenko will pick it back up. Bobcats will touch up. Eight minutes to go. Ruiz had his pocket picked by Tanner, who backhands it ahead. Glove down by LaBelle. LaBelle. Stretch feed, read by Newberg. Ivoskin's got a touch back up on side, so Newberg will dump it in. Smart play. Bedard on the far side. Newberg worked it away from him. And now Cunningham with the pass from McKittrick. Cunningham on the far side. Pinned up by Bohan. Barry enters the fray. Five-man rugby scrum for it. And sent all the way around the wall. Abdella threw it out top. McKittrick did just barely hold it in. Sends it in front. Pinballs around. And Bohan worked out of danger for the moment. Newberg will hoist it up and out. Pass ahead now for McKittrick. Walks in, shoots. What a blocker save by Liskowitz. Gonzalez sends this to the cross side. Pamela Lyon. Pocket picked by Ernst, and he'll hoist it out. McKittrick, it was behind him a bit. A sweep check there on Cunningham by Martin, who lays a hit on Pam Lyon. Liskowitz plays this over for Norwinski, who sends it up and out. Pam Lyon has to wait on his teammates to touch back up. Great back check right there by Andrioli. Puck pinballs into the high slot. Falanga on the pickup. Poke checked by four to the point. Now back to Pamela Lyon. He'll send it off the inboards. Ratcliffe. Six minutes left. Ratcliffe sends it low. Woolley was looking for a lane. He couldn't find one. And now dumped in by Frazee. Joseph will settle this behind the net. Pam Lyon sends it ahead. Woolley tips it into the zone. Delcourt settles this behind the net. Watched by Ruiz. Delcourt trying to start the breakout pass a little behind Vlasov. Picked up by Zinchenko, who shot his glove by Liskowitz. And he'll hang on to it. 5.35 to go. Media timeout, Bobcats still clinging to a 1-0 lead. Hartley Lee with the visit to Mount Hedge Express Wash. Located at 200 East Hollywood Drive. The inaugural season of Blue Ridge Bobcats hockey is brought to you by Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville. At Dutch Miller Nissan of Withville, you'll always get the best price on a brand new Nissan. From the sleek design of the Altima, to the off-road power of the Titan, to the ever-versatile Rogue. New inventory is arriving weekly. Check us out at DutchMillerNissanOfWithville.com or stop by Dutch Miller anytime during business hours to test drive a Nissan and experience for yourself why Nissan has the innovation that excites. Back here inside the Apex Center alongside Ryle Purdy, I'm Brett Wiseman. Bobcats 
Clinging to a one nothing lead here. With 5.35 left in the third. Newberg was tied up off the draw. Martin skates back of the goal with it. Backhands this off the glass. Gloved down by Newberg. Who's held up by McKittrick. Ruiz. To the point LaBelle shoots. Blocked in front off a stick. Ford and McKittrick battle on the far side. McKittrick digs it out. Checked by Ford from behind. And there will be a penalty coming for that. And that's a tough one there. Taking a penalty with five minutes and nine seconds left in the game. Fans not happy about it either. Stephen Ford slamming the door as he enters the box. Shots are even, the score is not. This is a huge power play. That it is. And a huge penalty kill. This is huge for both teams here. Bobcats have had three power plays tonight. Now so is Dan Barry. Both sides have been unable to convert. Bobcats clear it. Both teams' penalty kills operate at 82%. They've lived up to that billing tonight. LaBelle around Daly to his right. Abdella enters the zone. Out top, McKittrick. One-timer, Barry fanned on it. And the rebound was tapped wide. McKittrick. Down low to Barry. Down to Ruiz. Fanned on the pass. Ruiz and LaBelle will swap spots at the point. That shot right on and a chest save made by Liskowitz. Huge save there by Liskowitz. Stopping the clock one-fourth of the way through this penalty kill. So what's the conversation now as we've hit another media timeout? Well, Viota Zemlika is definitely saying the same thing that he's been saying since the first goal was scored, and that's keep going. Don't stop. One goal isn't enough. And it starts in the offense. I mean, it starts in the defense, defensive zone, carries on to the neutral zone and into the O zone, and it's shut down from the back all the way up. Owen Liskowitz has been nothing short of a brick wall tonight. The defensemen have been nothing short of perfectly on point tonight. The forwards, the same can be said. Everybody's doing the little things right, and we talked about it before the game even started and today's Purdy's picks. Simple strategy, do the little things right. That's exactly what that conversation is over there. Danbury, on the other hand, is saying, hey, we need quick passes, we need shots on goal, and we need to do it fast. Granted, they only need one goal, but you need one shot before you can get a goal. Right. As we said, as tight checking a game as this has been, late in one like this, when you get a power play, a lot of times that can throw a wrench into kind of the style that you've seen for the first bit. Well, for everybody watching at home, Cross your fingers, say a little prayer. Whatever you got to do to bring the good luck to the Bobcats, do it and do it now. McKittrick down low. Cunningham back to McKittrick outside the dots. To the point, LaBelle fakes the slap shot. Walks the line. Shot off the stick of Tattern and into the netting out of play. And that's exactly how it's drawn up in the books. Zach Tattern leading by example, stick in the lane there. A high IQ play by the veteran. A minute eight to go on the Danbury power play. Hattricks win the draw. LaBelle at the point. McKittrick pivots out top. LaBelle touch pass Ruiz. Shot blocked by Norwinski. They score. Out of the net, mouse scramble, Ruiz puts it home, and we're tied. And that was a mad scramble in front. Guys were going to block shots head first. Norwinski, Ernst, doing everything they could there. They threw the kitchen sink at the net, and well, we'll put it this way. A squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Well. The guy that scored just happens to be our impact player for Danbury tonight. It's Johnny Ruiz who just scored his 34th of the season. 
And that's nothing to scoff at when most teams will play 50 plus games in a season. Scoring in, well, 10 of them is a feat. 34 goals. Now that's something, something special. We got a brand new game as a Bobcat took a stick up high. That was Andrioli as he gets back to his feet, holding his neck. Now Frazee speeds up the wing. Trying to stick handle around Abdella, could not. Falanga plays it over and dumped into the zone. Liskowitz with three and a half left. Sends it up, read by Ratcliffe. Only a shot blocked. Bohan able to get it out of danger, ahead for Daly. LaBelle sends it ahead, Falanga. Trying to find Ratcliffe, was checked by Ford. To the point it comes, LaBelle, D to D, Gonzalez. Shot blocker to side by Liskowitz. Ratcliffe pinned up by Frazee. That pass off a stick. Out top it comes, LaBelle. After it was kept alive by Bedard, sends it all the way around. Bedard on the pinch. Now Barry works in, backhander just wide. Bedard sends it on, stick to side by Liskowitz. Andrioli at the end of the shift. Ahead for Frazee, checked from behind, hits the deck. No call. Ernst. Sends this ahead too far for Vlasov. Ivoskin works it free. Ivoskin waiting in. Save made by Joseph. Trying to go down low for Vlad. Could not find him. Now a pass ahead. This is Di Nicola. Centering feed. That shot. Pat save. Let's go it. And look at this. Now numbers the other way, three on three. Ivoskin checked. Ruiz clears. Bohan will pick it up with a minute 45 left. Ivoskin's down and holding his leg and dumped in by Bohan. Another cheap shot behind the play. And Newberg's answering to that one. Looks it was like out of our view. Johnny Ruiz got a piece of uh, Ivoshkin there. It was out of our view, I'm not sure who, but there's been a couple of guys that have taken liberties on Ivoshkin. And I mean, when you're the, uh, the point leader for this Bobcats team, as Ivoshkin is, you're gonna draw attention and teams are gonna wanna stop you as a top priority. He's back on his feet. That's a top priority right there. Yep. Good to see that. Great sign. Ivashkin's made an impact since his arrival here in Blue Ridge. Good to see him back on his feet. A minute 43 to go. Tied at one. As the fans are chanting, Purdy, Purdy. Love to hear it. Bohan couldn't gain the line. Works it away from Falanga. Now Ford ahead. Martin speeds into the zone, fakes the shot, takes it. Shoulder to side by Joseph. Centering pass. Sazenovitz couldn't work it free. Newberg sends it back down low. Abdella crunched by Sazenovitz. Now dumped out by Abdella, and this will go on goal. So no icing, and Liskowitz will glove it up into his midst. Anytime you got a bouncing puck headed for the net, you have to proceed with caution. We've seen it at every level. A rogue puck bouncing down the ice towards the net. Take a left turn. Go up about three more feet. Go to the right, then the left, and then between the legs. I mean, it, you name it, it's happened. That one tipped just wide. I believe Zinchenko got a piece of that. Martin 
Sends this ahead, and a hand pass on Danbury. Liskowitz, a really good save through traffic there. And he's made a few of that nature tonight. Using his X-ray vision ability <laughs> to see through a maze of players. Bobcats win the draw, Andrew only dumps it in. Bedard is on it. Met by Andrioli, he sends it around. LaBelle speeds ahead. Zinchenko centers McKittrick. Pass read by Norwinski and broken up. Andrioli back the other way, across the line. Sends it low. Bank pass is taken by Daly, back for Andrioli, trying to cycle it to Frazee. That was met by LaBelle, Ernst keeps it alive. Soccered over to Frazee, as Daly was blasted with nothing coming. Zinchenko shoots, Liskowitz makes the glove stop with 20 seconds left. As Daly and McKittrick have words. Ernst off the faceoff win to Martin. Martin speeds ahead. 10 seconds, dumped in. Joseph will hang on to it. That's a really smart play by Danny right there though. To get the dump in towards the net, force Joseph with Tatter charging to hop out on top of the crease and melt that down. A set play in the offensive zone with sub 10 seconds. Not enough time gone on the clock to pull the goalie, but enough time to generate a pass and a shot on goal with traffic. Hattricks win the draw. Gonzalez ahead. Slap from the line. Sticked up and out of play by Liskowitz, but there was a, a second and a tenth left on the clock. So exactly as I had just mentioned, not enough time to pull the goalie. Well, two seconds is Now they put time. two seconds on the clock, yeah. And here goes Joseph headed to the bench. They're gonna put six players on the ice for Danbury. And you know, at the, you, you have nothing to lose because if the defensive team gets it here, there's not enough time to get it down the ice and across the line in time. Right, this is a tactical play here by Danbury. Tattern ties up on the draw. That'll do it. And make no mistake, Tattern won that decisively. Zero chance. Well, folks got their money's worth tonight. Bonus hockey. Free hockey down here in Withville. 200 Apex Drive. You pay for three periods and you get four. Shots 33-30. After 60 minutes, not enough to decide this. Owen Liskowitz, what a night he's had. 55 roughly minutes of incredible play. Well, uh, I, heck, I'd say 60 minutes. He's had an outstanding night. That goal was just a pinball effect. Nothing against Owen on that one. The rest of this Bobcats team playing lights out against the Northern Division's Carolina edition. You could say that. The equivalent of the Thunderbirds of the North, I guess you could say. Danbury winning the championship last year. The Commissioner's Cup. Over Carolina. Over Carolina, yes. And a lot of teams, when they win something like that, they'll see a lot of the players 
bounce to other teams because, well, their stock price just went up. Yeah, and a lot of them did. Pretty much the entire defensive core from that team. Five out of the six defensemen from the cup winning team are either in the ECHL or the SPHL right now. The so, starting goaltender, Brian Wilson, has been in the ECHL the entire season. And Brian Wilson, what an outstanding year he's had, creating a ton of success for himself. Go, Brian. You're doing great. For the rest of this uh, Danbury team, I'm afraid they don't know what's coming. They're about to get with Bill. Five minutes of three on three overtime. Free hockey here in with Vegas. I'm buckle, excited. Buckle up, Andrioli. Massive humanity off the draw. What a play to sweep that over. Ernst across the line. Walks in. Poke checked. Andrioli recovers it. He'll try and send it out of the zone. And now Ruiz speeds back the other way. Ruiz around Daly takes a penalty. 22 seconds into overtime. Danbury is going to get a four on three power play. Daly taking an untimely penalty there. A hold is what the uh, ref will deliver. That's a tough call there. Yeah, objectively though, it looked like the right one. Either way, Hold on a second, Leon's just kicked somebody out. I, I believe it may be Coach uh, Zemlika. Yep, Bill Lyons just tossed somebody. It's Stephen Ford. Stephen Ford, okay, not, not head coach Zemi. So three on three hockey, a power play is administered. You're not gonna go to three on two, it's gonna be four, four on, on three. three. Until that penalty is up and then it will be four on four until the first whistle, which then will return to three on three hockey until the end of the game. And Newberg trying to get an explanation. Well, anytime you drop the puck here at the Apex Center, you can expect a healthy dose of adversity to rear its head in some shape or form. This time in an untimely penalty from Justin Daly, not delivered by ref number 76, but his accomplice. Well, the penalty to Daly comes at 22 seconds of the overtime. Danbury wins the faceoff. LaBelle at the point. He'll wait. McKittrick back to LaBelle. Walks down low. Slap shot score. And Danbury wins it in overtime. Liskowitz not agreeing with that when he chased the ref all the way to center ice. And Zemi's coming over too. They're having to get Zemi in between the officials. He's not happy at all. Goal comes at 427. It's 11 seconds into that power play. Now the refs are in the scorer's box looking at the iPads right now. Interference, high stick maybe? 
we're gonna look, we're gonna watch it back here on our end, and we're gonna see uh, see what we can gather. And Liskowitz was immediate, took his mask off, and went after the official. Now, from the looks of the video we have up here, I'm not seeing a high stick. However, there is a player directly in front of the net. Did he interfere with Owen? We are gonna see. The Bobcats remaining on the ice. Danbury in between the locker room and the ice. The refs are still in the scorer's box looking at the iPad. Regardless of uh, which way this call goes, a lot of adversity there in the last five minutes of this game. The Bobcats haven't left. They're still looking at this in the scorer's box just below us. Jimmy Milliken waiting at the gate. Yeah, we didn't really see anything on the replay. Aliskiewicz was just demonstrating something. And as the uh, chat reads, we're not seeing much either in the uh, replay, but Leon's having a streak uh, to his name for, well, not so good refing. We've collected evidence over the last few games he's refed here at the Apex Center, and, well, I think it's... Zeros and ones at this point, Brett. I don't think there's any uh, doubt in my mind that. This is a lengthy, lengthy review. And as Jaden has mentioned in the chat, yes, the players do deserve better refs. The league as a whole deserves better refs, especially when this is the entry point to professional hockey. You need to have an established core of refs. And it's tough because the best refs, well, they, they make their way up to the NHL and AHL. And the ECHL, SPHL, and FPHL sometimes don't always get the best crew because, I mean, you've got hockey going on every single night across the country from NCAA to ACHA, to uh, semi-pro, to major pro, minor pro, you name it. Tough refs, and speaking of refs, one's out of the box. What do we got? Now, Billy McCreary's walking off. He's got an iPad pulled up. Maybe he's got a different angle. Now the hat tricks are starting to walk back towards the ice. And Randy Kaiser is blowing the horn. Of course, Randy Kaiser and the Bland Virginia crew here tonight in numbers. Daly has just skated back in the box. So McCreary and the rest of the Danbury team have made their way off the ice and they're headed to the locker room. The refs are still looking at the uh, call. So I you mean, know I, di I didn't see anything. 
So we're going to take this to the to the chat and see what see what's going on. The chat's just as confused as we are. So we don't know what we're looking at. The prospector, Mark Robinson. Yep, no high stick from what I see and, and from what our angle shows. Yep, good goal. Yep, good goal. Leon's congratulations. You suck. Now, why did it take so long to figure that out is my question. Oh, and Lisiewicz is still having it out. And there is not a single Bobcats player that has not thrown or whacked something on their way off the ice. That is not a happy bunch. Well, as we await an explanation, the best we can do up here in the booth is make an educated guess. And frankly, I don't know quite where to start no, on that one. No, I don't. But for Owen Liskiewicz to be that upset and that adamant right away, something had to have tipped it. And Zemi wants an explanation. He's out there with Newberg, Ryan Seavey. So we just heard from Todd Catrone. The hat trick player was in the blue. Okay. So they were looking at goalie interference, they which were is the only other thing. Goalie interference. And I mean. Hey, remember. Fed League Flash just pointed this out, our friend Gary Ryan. Uh, this is the same officiating crew that gave that phantom goal to Binghamton about a month ago. That yep. former Bobcat Spencer Kozlowski was none too pleased with. Right, yep. Thank you, Gary, for um, first of all, everything you do covering the FPHL, but also coming around tonight to watch a Blue Ridge Bobcats Whitfield special. And for anybody in the chat here still hanging around, go check out Gary Ryan with the Fed League Flash for a full recap of tonight's game and every single game in the FPHL. And Justin Daly is just now. Thank you, fans, for attending tonight's game. Exited the penalty box. Captain Cody Oaks walks back out on the ice. Well, sadly, let's look at this game in hindsight now. Taking Danbury, the commission, Commissioner Cup champions of last year, to a 1-0 game until the 55th minute, roughly, is no easy feat. Now, Danbury sits atop the leaderboard over in the uh, They're third division, in the Empire. Or third, sorry. Third in their division. And a chorus of boos for our officiating crew tonight. They're going to need an armored car to uh, get from the ice to their locker room. And Jimmy Milliken wants an explanation, I think, as well. The Bobcats general manager. As he's standing over there by the door. Well, he may be doubling as an extra security guard at this point. Yeah, I mean, Leon's might need it at this point. I mean, he's gotten a track record of not very good calls. And I, Well, it, here's, here's my issue. And I agree with what a lot of people said in the chat. If you're reviewing goalie interference, it didn't look like there was any contact made with Liskowitz. So you had to have been looking at a high stick. You would think. Right. Regardless of what you were looking at, it shouldn't have taken seven to 10 business days to come to the conclusion that the call on the ice stood. Oh. Let a deep sigh 
describe the feeling that we're all feeling. I, I get reviewing it, and I appreciate reviewing it. However, there's no way it should take that long to come to that conclusion. It, it's the length of the review, whatever the purpose for it was, regardless of what the outcome ended up being, both teams and these fans should not have had to wait 20 minutes to figure out whether or not the game was over. Yeah, it's, it's a tough bounce. And for the refs, to let this get out of hand as it had, I mean, it'd be one thing if it was the refs favoring one team, but honestly, they're not favoring either no. team. They're making terrible calls either way. So it's, it's not a bias that I'm applying to uh, these refs here. It's just a general observation that, well, frankly, they are not good refs. And it, it, you said it, not me. And it pains me deeply to say that because this league needs good refs. This right. league needs good refs to survive. So the product on the ice is affected directly by the refing unit. And, well, we've, we've seen it time before and time again. An issue that is still unresolved. The good refs, where have the good refs gone and where are all the guards? Well, we, we can only speculate as to what the review was for and why it took so long. Uh, you and I will go talk to Owen um, after the game, I'm sure, and, and see if we can figure some things out. And uh, when we come on the air tomorrow night, We'll try, we'll of course mention and, and touch on what the conversation or, or what the gripe was because something had to have occurred that we didn't see for him to be that adamant and for Vortex and Malika to be that hot to come off the bench right after. And Zemlika had to be restrained when uh, he made his way over to the refing circle in his uh, dress shoes. Right. He had to be restrained. That's how incensed he was. Right. Owen Liskowitz, his helmet was on top of his head. He was skating to the refs before Danbury even had a chance to celebrate. So they saw something, obviously. What it was, well, we're going to find out. And we can talk about it tomorrow, that's for sure. And let's let's talk about tomorrow right now. Right. The stage is set. Danbury barely snuck away with this one. Uh, listen, all that aside, to get a point in this game, I guess that, that's a statement right there to, to pick up a point in this one. And it's a Danbury team that I don't think expected the Bobcats to come out and punch them right in the mouth right from the get-go and play a full 60 minutes plus tonight. Yeah. And Danbury could go one of two ways with this. They could react to that and come out a little bit harder tomorrow, or the Bobcats can match it and punch them in the mouth again. In time will tell if uh, the same result is repeated tomorrow, we're in for a treat. The tempers are reaching a boiling point. It's, it's gonna be a bloodbath for a lack of better words. But either way, tonight, the fans weren't happy. The coaches weren't happy. I mean, McCreary was making his way off the ice with an iPad, and the ref said, hey, hold on, hold on. So clearly, I mean, they, anyways. Well, moving on, we'll move yeah. on. Tomorrow. We, we can't beat the horse while it's still dead. Right. Tomorrow is a new day, a new opportunity to seize everything we've ever wanted. And are we going to capture it or are we going to let it slip? You're just going to leave out the part about mom's spaghetti or? We're going to leave that part out. We're going to leave that part out. That's for the chat to uh, fiddle around with. Clip Noted. that and put in mom's spaghetti at the end. There you go. Well, for our camera operator, Kelsey Marshant, Ryle Purdy, our color commentator, and all of you, we'll see you tomorrow night.